Shanghai GDG is a very interesting、uh, developer community. I'm glad somebody has asked this question. I mean, this is where the magic happens. This is primarily a question and answer show. So, if any of you out there would like to ask questions. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's、uh, Google Maps Developers Live,、uh, formerly Google Maps Office Hours.、Uh, with me this week, we have a couple of members from the Google.org Crisis Response Team:、uh, Pete, Pete、uh, Genki, and Ka Ping Yi.、Uh, do you guys want to、uh, kind of introduce yourselves and say kind of what you work on here at、uh, Google or with Google.org? Sure.、Uh, my name is Ping.、Um, I'm a software engineer、um, in Google Crisis Response. Um, and I'm the tech lead of the Person Finder project and the Crisis Map project, which you're going to see a little bit about today.、Uh, and I'm Pete Genki,、uh, as Paul mentioned, a GIS data engineer,、uh, and I support the Crisis Map project and、uh, several other geo efforts to to get、uh, data into Maps and Earth. Awesome. So,、uh, well, with that, why don't we just、uh, dive into the demos? You guys got some、uh, pretty interesting stuff to show us today. Cool.、Uh, things like、uh, Crisis Maps, the、uh, People Finder, Person Finder, and、uh, Let's, let's see it. Sure. We'll see how much time we have,、uh, but we'll do as many demos as we can.、Um, okay.、Uh, so as I mentioned,、uh, I'm Pete, and this is Ping.、Um, so we want to spend about 15 minutes today just providing a high-level overview of、uh, Crisis Map、uh, and offering some technical detail along the way.、Um, so before getting started,、uh, it's worth mentioning that a majority of what's been developed、uh, and what we'll be、uh, demoing today、uh, is based on the same tools and APIs that are available to external developers. Uh, so a big goal of this project is to open source as much as the code as we can,、um, and the number of、uh, you know maximizing、um, you know the amount of external tools we're using、uh, and minimizing the internal uh, tools uh, just means that it's going to be a lot easier、uh, when it's time to kind of push that code out.、Um, so、um, why don't I, I talk、uh, real quickly about the crisis response team?、Uh, so the crisis response team was formed、uh, in January of、uh, 2011 after the、uh, the Haiti earthquake. Uh, just as a way to better organize, um, uh, to uh, better organize uh, the Google、um, and community resources in response to an event,、uh, really making critical information more、uh, accessible in times of disaster.、Um, crisis Map、uh, that we're talking about today、uh, is the application that our team uses、uh, to mash up crisis-related data, such as evacuation routes, flood zones, and disaster-related imagery.、Um, the goal for us is to take、uh, crisis-related geo data. Um, that traditionally has required、um, special software and、uh, expertise、uh, to be able to view.、Uh, it takes data that uh, also um, lives uh, scattered across the web in, in many different formats,、uh, and just makes them、um, available to all users、uh, without any kind of special software.、Uh, so really, just making critical disaster geo data、uh, more available.、Um, so when we combine these layers on a map,、uh, different organizations that don't normally communicate with one another. Uh, are able to see their map data、uh, in context with the the different layers.、Um, so we're going to go over to、uh, a quick demo here、um, that Ping is going to display.、Um, so since um、uh, since we launched for Hurricane Irene in 2011, we've responded、uh, to many different disasters.、Uh, most recently,、uh, Hurricane Isaac. So what we're seeing here is our Hurricane Isaac map.、Um, Isaac、uh, hit New Orleans as a Category One storm on the seventh anniversary. Uh, just about the seventh anniversary of、uh, Hurricane Katrina,、um, and it caused an estimated two billion dollars worth of damage.、Um, with hurricanes, we have a little bit of a lead time,、uh, so in this case, we were able to work、uh, with the states of Florida, Mississippi, the Red Cross, NOAA, and other organizations with really relevant crisis-related data, and prepare this uh, this um, this Hurricane Isaac uh, uh, crisis map, a preparedness map, really.、Um, so what Ping is demoing here, we have、um, we have uh, shelters, um, we have.、Um, We have many different layers, so he'll pop a place mark there.、Um, this is coming from the Red Cross. It's a fusion table layer.、Uh, it provides nationwide active and open shelters and number of beds.、Um, we also have things like evacuation routes、um, that are on the map.、Um, so we have、um, from FEMA. It's a fusion table. It's all of the evacuation routes for the the coastal states、uh, likely to be impacted by a tropical storm.、Um, we also have、uh, coming from the Google Maps API、uh, current traffic. So this is what I mean by providing crisis-related data in context.、Um, and if you turn on the evacuation routes PDF here too, so this is providing more local-level data from、uh, the Mississippi DOT.、Uh, so really,、um, if you're a user,、um, your you know your your city,、um, your town,、um, your apartment has been evacuated. You're looking to kind of get out of the city、um, in advance of Isaac.、Uh, 
uh, we want to provide that information and context so you can provide so you have enough information to make you know an informed decision here so uh, maybe you see that one evacuation route um, has a lot more traffic uh, than another um, maybe you would take the, the less kind of traffic way out of the city. So this is just really kind of taking information that lives separately on the web, uh, combining and evaluated ways so that people can, uh, you know, really make better decisions. And Pete, is that, is that kind of why you, you chose Fusion Tables as kind of a, a back-end system for, for um, the data so, you're serving? Yeah, so we, we um, as, as part of our crisis map, we're able to accept many different formats. Um, some, uh, many of those come directly um, from the Maps API, so it's the built-in support. So KML, uh, Fusion Tables is one of those, GRSS, um, Google Map Tiles, um, and then all of the, the built-in Maps API layer types that we find really useful, especially for, for crisis response. Um, and as you see Ping turning on and off layers, it's worth mentioning that much of the uh, application's overall functionality um, is built atop Google Maps API here. So turning, um, hiding, and showing layers is just uh, a built-in um, into the, uh, the Google Maps API. Um, OK, so one of the questions that we get asked um, is, like, how do you find data for the web? Or how do you find data for the map? What does good data look like? Um, really, what is the life of a kind of crisis layer in the map here? Um, so we thought that we would do a quick demo uh, just to show how we find, how the crisis, uh, crisis response team finds information, uh, map data, for the, for the map. Uh, so we're going to jump over um, to the NOAA National Hurricane Center. Uh, so NHC, they provide, they're the authoritative source of uh, tropical storm information for the U.S. Uh, we're looking at the website now. Um, you can see that there's one tropical storm, Nadine. Uh, for us, for, for the map geeks of the world, we, we're looking for kind of a data link. Uh, so we're looking where we can actually find data. Uh, and they have a, uh, I believe it's a GIS data set. So you click on that, um, and they provide a slew of different data that you're able to kind of use and, and play with. Uh, so in our case, uh, KML is a format that we, um, that we really, really like. It's an open standard. It's owned by the community. It's supported uh, by a number of Google products, as well as third-party applications. Uh, it's based on XML. Um, uh, so you can see here, uh, there's, there's just a, a version of KML. Um, it's just XML, like I said. Um, it includes all of the styling information. Um, and uh, importantly, it plays really nicely uh, with Google Maps. Uh, so what we do, uh, we see that a provider has a KML link. It's one of the formats that we support on Crisis Map. Uh, we copy that link. Um, Crisis Map points at third-party uh, layers. We do no data hosting. Um, and what we do then is to kind of like validate that the, the data looks good. Uh, we just paste that URL directly into uh, Google Maps. Uh, and Google Maps will do the rendering for us. It'll show you what, uh, what the KML looks like uh, via Maps. If you pull it in via the Maps API uh, with uh, KML layer, this is exactly what you'll see. So in this case, the data looks good. Um, we see that, uh, thankfully, it's not, um, it's not on course to make landfall. Uh, and it's a relatively weak storm. So that's good. So uh, this is something that we would add to a crisis map uh, if we were doing a uh, Nadine crisis map. So uh, Ping here has added it to the map. And you can see this is what, uh, indeed, it looks like. So um, uh, we, have, uh, yeah, we have the link there. Uh, the other thing that we do, uh, we, for people that, you know, we, we provide this for people that want to look at the data on a crisis map. But uh, for people that want to actually um, bring it into their own application or create their own mashup, uh, we provide links to the source data as well. Uh, so you can see there that we have the download KML link. And this also works with GRSS layers as well. So um, these ones, it's really easy to kind of mash up. So we do try to provide, uh, improve the discoverability of uh, you know, the, the raw data for that. So quick question about that. If, if a developer wanted to you know, do their own mashup with like a crisis map and, and mm -hmm. that type of information, um, would you recommend they, they like actually embed your map in their website or, or actually just pull the data out and kind of build their own map around it? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so you have m uh, many options. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the things that we provide, uh, we have share functionality. So if you want to just take the layers that we have and provide your own kind of view of that. So uh, we do spatial bookmarking, uh, we affectionately call it. So your viewport um, and all of the layers that you have enabled, uh, once you click share, uh, those are saved in the URL. Um, so you can pass that around with G+, uh, Twitter, or Facebook. Or you can actually, uh, we provide the iframe code too. So if you want to actually just embed that in your website, you can do that. If you want to do your own mashup, we definitely encourage that. We're developers. We love to see uh, you know, different people's takes on, 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 on web mapping. Um, so we have, the, uh, we have the KML and GRSS links there. So uh, we encourage people to do that as well uh, if they want to kind of customize what we have. Um, you know, because we're using open standards, it means that uh, you, know, you could use open layers if you want to do that. Or you know, we prefer Google Maps, but there's other options as well. 
Um, and the one thing that I should you know, re-mention is that um, you know, we are looking to open source this too. So if there's things that uh, maybe you want to customize this in some way, uh, just stay tuned and we, can, um, you know, we should be able to uh, you know, uh, give you some, some new hotness to kind of play around with. Awesome. Um, OK, uh, so I mentioned KML is one of the layers uh, that we talked about. Um, another life of a layer is a Google Map tile. Um, so Google Map tiles, uh, basically, uh, a Google Map tile is like when you, when you uh, first load Google Maps and you see the road data or the satellite. Those are all map tiles. Uh, Google Maps allows you to kind of override the default map tiles with your own custom map tiles. Um, and that's, uh, that's a format that we support with Crisis Maps. So uh, what we're looking at now is the, um, so Noah flew a bunch of imagery uh, right after Hurricane Isaac um, hit uh, New Orleans. Uh, they're uh, making those data available via uh, their own website, which is great. Um, they have some cool functionality. Uh, you can download the raw data. You can toggle the transparency. Uh, with Crisis Map, we think there's a lot of value in kind of mashing this up with other different data sets. Uh, so one of the things that we did here, um, because they're producing a map tile, so we're just able to uh, point, um, uh, point at their data uh, you know, using the, the map tile format. Um, so I think we have an example of that. Uh, so that's what, uh, that's what a map tile looks like. So it's basically uh, the, the URL. Uh, and then uh, Google Maps replaces the x, y, and z um, with the, um, the kind of location on the map that those tiles reside. Um, and so we have an example of that. This is just the Mercator scheme. Uh, and then you can see that they're, they're organized into uh, 16 tiles, and those increase as you, uh, as you zoom into the map. Um, so map tiles are, these work really well. Map tiles work great for, uh, for imagery, whereas let's say you have maybe a two gigabyte image. Uh, you can break that into bite-sized pieces, into you know, smaller JPEGs and PNGs. Uh, also for vector data, if you have a very large data set um, and you don't want to kind of render that as vector, you can turn that into a raster uh, and then slice and dice that. And there's uh, many good tools for doing that, um, many open source tools. I believe maptiler.org is one uh, that you can check out if you want to, uh, to kind of create your own map tiles. So tiling is kind of an art and a science. Like, so what, what, what tools do you guys use specifically? Is it something that external developers? Yeah, so um, you know, we love open source tools. So maptiler.org, um, I believe, is one of them. There's, uh, there's an open source tool uh, that lots and lots of people in the GIS world use. It's, um, it's called uh, Google, G-D-A-L. Uh, and there's something called GDAL to tiles. So that's, uh, that's you know, part of the, the, the Google uh, package. Um, so people can just download that, and then they can create their own tiles that uh, you know, work with Google Maps. Nice. So it is kind of an art, uh, but there's high returns in terms of being able to visualize really complex uh, data sets on a web map uh, once you're able to do that. Um, so um, because the value, um, the, the, the value of a map really has a lot to do with the underlying data, and that knowing that good data comes in many different formats, um, you know, we, we try to support uh, as, many, um, as many of these uh, kind of geo formats as we can. So Maps API provides a lot of these for free, like I mentioned. So Fusion Tables, um, <coughs> KML, KMZ, GRSS. Um, one of the things that we're looking at is supporting additional kind of formats for the map, um, especially some of the more traditional GIS uh, layers and data sets, uh, including PDF. Um, and we're looking at doing that building on top of uh, um, Google App Engine. Uh, so App Engine scales extremely well. Um, you know, we can serve lots and lots of traffic and sleep well at night knowing that we don't have to um, you know, manually like, tweak the application just to make sure it stays up. So uh, this is an example here um, where we're serving. Uh, we have imagery um, coming to us. We also have, um, we have the PDF if you want to maybe zoom into that. Um, uh, <coughs> uh, where is it? This one? Yep. So this is the case here. So we have the, the uh, Mississippi evacuation route. So uh, we, we're playing around with converting PDF into map tiles uh, and the ability to kind of toggle the uh, transparency of that. Um, and this is especially relevant where you're dealing with, um, uh, for map tiles, uh, where you're dealing with like before and after imagery. So you can turn on the satellite uh, and do the comparison. Um, so we mentioned that uh, th this application really is really about like, improving the discoverability and accessibility of uh, crisis-related uh, geodata on the web. Um, and a lot of this has to do um, not, with, not just with the data, but with the presentation and supporting uh, many different browsers and devices. Um, we've made a, a conscious decision uh, to really kind of uh, provide only one version of, of Crisis Map. Uh, so there's not a separate uh, desktop and mobile version of Crisis Map. Um, and that means that we really kind of like, we're really focusing on improving the, the scalability of the map. So uh, what Ping has here, um, and we'll show you, is that the UI elements on the map dynamically resize themselves based on the available real estate. So as we get closer and closer, you'll see that the search bar there kind of disappeared. 
Um, as we get even closer, uh, as, as the screen real estate becomes less and less, you'll see here uh, that the layers panel is actually kind of like tucked in uh, into button form. So this would be kind of representative of a tablet uh, or of a, um, of a phone that has a higher resolution. And the beauty of this is that um, you know, we're able to make the same kind of map data available uh, on a desktop as we are on, the, on a mobile device. Um, one of the interesting data points that we have, uh, for Hurricane Isaac, we saw um, over 20% of access uh, of Crisis Map uh, on, on these kind of mobile devices, not desktops. Um, and really, this reflects the larger kind of macro trend of people moving away from the desktop onto uh, tablets and phones. Uh, but for crisis response especially, uh, you know, where people are being evacuated, you know, they, they don't necessarily take their desktop or laptop with them. They're looking for information um, you know, away from their, their home. So uh, for us, it was a really kind of like uh, no-brainer decision to make sure that mobile was a, a core kind of, mobile support was a core functionality um, of the product here. Did you guys see any kind of trade-offs using the, the Maps JS API versus, like, a, let's say, like the native Android map view um, for, for building the mobile application? Or did you guys look at the, the map view, Android map view itself? For um, we, we, as, as Pete was mentioning, we, we made the conscious decision to build just Keep one on. app so that um, as we added features to it, as we like, continue developing it, all the features that we develop would be available both in desktop and mobile cool. at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it's actually it's just, it's just the same app. Um, and when it opens in mobile, it's opening in a browser. Cool. Mm -hmm. So performance-wise, though, everything seems to, to work Yeah, the V3 of the Maps API um, did a lot of performance enhancements specifically to make it work well on mobile and tablets. Nice. Um, and that's really paid off for us. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, OK. So I mentioned, uh, I mentioned kind of the mobile support. A big part of that um, is, is the functionality. But another part is the, the performance of uh, the application itself. So if you're, if you're kind of like serving your application out to phones that don't have the same kind of uh, i7 processor as your desktop does, it means that you have to pay a lot of attention uh, to kind of performance and making sure that the application just performs really well. So um, you know, for us, we use the, the Clojure JavaScript framework um, you know, to, to kind of organize the code. But it also allows us to optimize and kind of shrink the code uh, so it downloads fast and runs fast. Uh, an interesting kind of stat that we have is that our JavaScript code uh, is about 1.8 megabytes in size, so all of the code that we have uncompressed. Uh, and, and that's clearly too big to send to uh, a mobile device. Um, using, the, uh, uh, using the Clojure compiler, we're able to get that down by over uh, a factor of 10 to 160 kilobytes. So that's much smaller. Um, and then uh, we're using, uh, Clojure provides the goog.module, uh, which is uh, basically a dynamic loading mechanism, uh, which allows us to load only what we need first. Uh, and that takes the initial JavaScript download size down to about 45 kilobytes. Uh, so for a mobile device, like just imagine sending you know, that 1.8 chunk of JavaScript versus sending uh, the 45 kilobytes just to get the application loading and getting the, the, da uh, the data um, into the app. Um, so it's um, another thing uh, that we should mention is that we, uh, we release every two weeks. Um, and we want to make that uh, we want to kind of make that even uh, improve the velocity even more. So we re uh, release uh, in shorter kind of intervals. Um, and for that, we really need automated tests. And that really kind of also speaks to the kind of cross-browser uh, and mobile support, like making sure we don't have breakages and that we're supporting uh, you know, this slew of kind of ways of accessing uh, Crisis Map. Uh, so we run our tests using uh, Google JS test. Uh, it's an open source project. It runs in pure V8, uh, which means that the tests run fast. Uh, and that's in italics, fast. <laughs> uh, there's, no uh, there's no DOM uh, included uh, with JS test. So we have to write fakes for the DOM documents and elements. Um, but the trade-off means that, that we have 330 unit tests uh, that run in under five seconds. So we're testing, uh, and we do this continuously. We're testing uh, all parts of the application on a unit testing level, uh, and it's just done really quickly. So when we have tests that run that fast, um, we can run them as part of the checking in code. So before I'm able to check in any code or ping or anyone else in the project, uh, we actually have to run the suite of tests. So that takes less than five seconds, so it's not too painful. But it just means that we're not introducing any regressions into the code base um, when we're uh, um, uh, iterating so quickly in, on, the d uh, on the development side. Um, what, what do you guys, uh, do you know what your code coverage looks like? I mean, how much of your code is actually being tested? Uh, I don't have a percentage number for that off the top of my head, but it's. We, we've covered almost everything. It's, good. it's, actually, it's mm -hmm. actually pretty good. When um, you have 1.8 megabytes of JavaScript code, there's a lot that has to get tested. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> Can I give the crazy keystroke demo? Uh, yes, yeah. definitely. <laughs> so, uh, so the really cool thing is that, I mean, even though all the tests run in five seconds, um, running the test for just a single file takes like half a second or a quarter of a second, which is so fast that you can actually run the tests 
while you're editing. Um, so over on the right, I've got a window that's running the test continuously. You can see it's actually updating tests several times per second. And green um, means good. Yeah, and green's good. And on the left, I've got the same. I've got the file that's under test open, um, and I can, you know, as I'm typing into this file, you know, I make a change, and I can immediately see that the tests are failing or succeeding. So I, I don't even have to go through the process of like opening the file, editing it, saving it, running the tests, and then opening the file again and changing it and running mm -hmm. the test. That's as I type, right? Every every keystroke I type, I can immediately see the result um, on the test. So <laughs> I just broken that, you know. That missing character so back check in, that it's one fixed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that's uh, you know makes me feel a lot more confident as I'm working um, about uh, uh, making sure that all tests pass. Mm -hmm. So uh, JS tests for the win, basically. Yeah, yeah. Check it out. It's it, it's really amazingly fast. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so we just wanted to provide a few highlights of Crisis Map. Um, it's good to talk about kind of what's next, uh, what we have, um, what we have coming on, uh, coming next. So uh, better format support. I mentioned that, uh, especially for kind of more traditional GIS formats. Uh, our ability to, to, you know, be able to handle uh, additional kind of content on the web means that we're just able to, uh, you know, provide the best uh, and most complete kind of picture. Uh, you know, of things on the ground, and especially from the preparedness standpoint, just getting all of the data that you know people need to, to make good decisions on the ground, and just you know make that available to them without any kind of the, the special software. Um, trust signals uh, and visual cues uh, to improve kind of understanding of the data. So uh, things like metadata uh, from kind of coming from the GIS world. Uh, metadata is a, kind of a four-letter word, but it really is important. Like you know, telling people like when the data were last updated. So like the shelters, for instance. Uh, you know, people want to know that there's you know a certain number of beds there. They want to know that the evacuation routes are still valid. So, uh, providing that kind of information to allow people to really kind of trust the data is something uh, something that we want to do. Uh, uh, more support for user-generated content. Uh, so, in the crisis response space, we're seeing uh, efforts like Ushahidi uh, really kind of like pay off in terms of like allowing uh, affected people provide information that's uh, relevant to responders and the rest of the community. Um, and we really want to do a better job of, of kind of surfacing uh, that data to provide that, uh, like I said, more complete picture of things on the ground. Uh, and we're, we're doing some of that now. We have like uh, YouTube videos that people are providing. Uh, we have webcams, uh, but, but there's a lot more that we can do there. Uh, and then open sourcing is another thing that I mentioned as well. Um, so I would say check out google.org crisis map. Uh, we'd love to hear any feedback that you have. Uh, and before handing it back to Paul, I should also say that we're hiring. Go, oh, awesome. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like, uh, I mean, you guys have the technologies down. It sounds like a pretty fun job. So, uh, we sleep well at night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, do you guys get to take vacations around hurricane seasons, or is that <laughs> the, uh, that's your only? Uh, um, the nice thing is that we have, a, um, we have kind of a worldwide team. So, we have folks in Sydney, we have folks in Japan, we have a New York office, and you know, we're, we're, we have a, a, a Mountain View contingent as well. Um, so that we are able to take vacations, there and like knowing that you know <laughs> events happen all over the world, uh, there's there's going to be someone that can you know pick up uh, you know to to help out when something happens. Um, so so where do where do people go if they want to look at the job you guys have? Is it posted on the job site? It should be. Uh, check out google.org um, or sorry google.com/jobs and search for crisis response. Uh, otherwise, just hit me up on uh, Google Plus, and I'd be happy to to kind of refer you uh, to an open position or um, just give you the details. Cool. Uh, I'm going to take a quick peek and see uh, what kind of questions we got. On, uh, oops, got to reload the page. And I'll just watch the YouTube video here of the, yeah. uh, the caterpillar. <laughs> I can watch myself right now live. Okay. Uh, let's see. About the recording. Uh, I don't see anything in here right now. There's a couple questions that I uh, kind of had just listening to you guys. Um, so you did you did mention open sourcing. Mm -hmm. So what 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 are we looking at? I mean, are you um, sometime this year, maybe early next year? Um, so I would stay. I would say stay tuned. Uh, we're working on it right now. Um, for a sneak peek, um, a previous kind of version of Crisis Map. Um, uh, it was done by the Sydney team. It's called Map Visage, uh, code.google.com slash mapvisage or mapvisage.appspot.com. Uh, basically, that's the template for how we're going to do this. Uh, so it'll live at code.google.com. Uh, it'll be you know, an App Engine instance, and it's basically everything you need to stand, on your own, uh, stand up your own crisis map. Uh, so stay tuned, and you know, we should be able to provide a, an announcement for, of that when it happens. Uh, so hopefully sooner rather than later. Very cool. All right. Well, I think that's everything. Um, so, uh, you know, this, again, this is uh, Pete Genki and Ka Ping Ping, or Ka Ping Yi. Um, you can find Pete on uh, Google Plus if you want to ask any questions, and feel free to answer any, ask any questions on our YouTube channel. 
and we can try to answer them there. And uh, coming up uh, next week, I think we're back down in Sydney, um, potentially talking with one of the, uh, the, the new PMs on the Places API. And uh, two weeks out, uh, I think we might have uh, for Geo for Good coming. So uh, definitely stay tuned. We'll, we'll have everything posted on the Google Plus channel. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, see you guys in the next week. Bye. Thanks, Paul.